When I think of October, the word that honestly comes to mind is overwhelming. I mean that mostly in a good way, as I discovered multiple JRPGs I liked and was happy that I could try, but there was also so much to play that I have stuff going into November, which is something I usually try not to have. But that minor stress of having too much to play instantly goes away since one of the games I'm playing is an Atelier game, so all is good in the world, and I do look back on the games I finished in October and feel good about them, along with the ones I'm continuing with now. So as we truly get into November, the games left over from last month and the releases the new month will bring, these are the JRPGs I played in October. My most anticipated game of recent times, Atelier Ryza, is finally out for myself and all to play, and with it as my game of the month for October, despite it only coming out towards the end of it, I'm pleased to say that it's every bit as wonderful as I'd hoped it'd be. When I started playing, I was instantly taken aback by how beautiful it looks with the light and shade added into the world, making such a difference as promised, and it's also probably the smoothest Atelier I've played so far, with no frame rate drops along with its gorgeous soundtrack and world, making me feel like this Atelier has finally hit that next level that the series needed to. What I was most intrigued by were its new systems for battle and synthesis though, and while I admittedly found them a little overwhelming, especially the new battle system at first, they're really growing on me as I continue playing, and may take over as my new favorite versions of Atelier's systems. The new synthesis system makes it really easy to see exactly what's going on and happening to your creation with the skill tree, and I love unlocking new recipes as I make each one. The battle system system is a change of pace and took a little practice, but ultimately I like the fast-paced nature of it, and the active elements add a good contrast to the otherwise relaxing nature of Atelier that comes from the gathering and crafting, and then battle feels more lively as the battle should. These combined with the lovable nature of Ryza and her enthusiasm and attitude make this tick all the boxes that make me love Atelier games, so I feel really good about Ryza so far. It's still very much early days for my Ryza playthrough as I'm balancing it with another game right now, but I really love it so far, and the highlight of my day right now is honestly switching it on and playing for an hour before doing anything else, as getting lost in its crafting and adventures is so, so enjoyable. I'll be playing more of it to get my review out for it as soon as I can, and just because I enjoy it. But for now, if it's one you're thinking about picking up, I definitely recommend its relaxing and fun world, and I'm glad it's a game that's helping more people discover the wonderful world of Atelier. A close runner-up for JRPG of the month this month was Destiny Connect, which despite being fairly short at just 15 hours was packed full of charm that made me appreciate its take on a JRPG world and let its story have a good pace that kept it engaging from beginning to end. It's one of those JRPGs with no VO but a lot of personality that I mentioned last month, with so many little puns in its enemy names, its script, and the cute way its robot Isaac transforms that made the world of Clockney feel unique, and all its charm made me appreciate the feeling of its world and ultimately just wish that there was more of it. If you want to hear more of my thoughts about it in detail, feel free to check out my review. I think this game has a lot of potential to fly under the radar just from how different it is to other things, but I definitely think it's worth a try if you like Pixar movies or that part of Kingdom Hearts games, and if you're looking for a feel-good JRPG with adorable robots and fun, Destiny Connect is definitely one to check out. While some people are very adamant that the Trails games are to be played in order, when I received a code for it last month, I decided as a series that I was curious about, I wanted to find out for myself if that was true, and honestly, in a series as big as this one hours-wise, I was almost happy to be given a start point. In hindsight, I do understand why people recommend playing the others first, as there are so many characters and pieces to its world that make having a background knowledge of this world beneficial, but at 57 hours in and still going, thanks to its backstory, feature and the throwbacks that the story provides, I feel like I've been able to get plenty of enjoyment from my time with it, and getting to know its characters old and new has me much more invested in the series as a whole. Aside from its depth that shows itself in many parts of the game, from big scenes to extra lore found in quests and books in the world, I've been pleasantly surprised with the anime feeling of it all. From its huge chapters that are basically arcs to the inclusion of mechs and its risque humor, it's a little different to how I thought it'd be and what seems to be a good way, and it's certainly 
certainly an interesting world to dive deeper into, as it gives a lot of ways to do so, with its bonding features and side events as well. Story aside, I've also been enjoying its combat systems. I really like the Brave Point system that lets you power up your party with passive buffs from having a high critical rate to being invincible for a certain amount of turns in exchange for not using big link attacks. And using that in conjunction with its special attacks keeps battles feeling strategic and looking cool at the same time, along with the fact that you get to fight in a mech sometimes, which is pretty awesome. I've just started Atelier Riser recently, but Trails of Cold Steel 3 is the game I'm balancing alongside it right now. I am giving Trails a bit of priority since I'm so far into it and do want to review it soon, so since I just hit chapter 4 a few days ago before working on this video, hopefully I can finish its next few big chapters soon. So for now, I'm looking forward to seeing the rest of the story and hoping to talk more about it soon. One game I didn't talk much about that I played in October was Disgaea for a Complete Plus, which was another I was lucky enough to receive a code for, but also hit me when I just started Trails of Cold Steel 3, so mostly fell on the wayside. However, Disgaea for a Complete Plus was one I had wanted to try since I've seen my brother play and enjoy the series before, so I've always been a little curious about it, and having tried it now, I could see its silly humor definitely being something I could get into. The dialogue in my first hour with it about sardines and Prinnies was a lot of fun, and being set in the underworld, I could see it going in a cool, dark humor direction, which definitely has me intrigued, and I like the way it brought in its personality right away. Gameplay-wise, I was always intrigued by Disgaea's deep tactical nature, and also by the fact that its level cap is at 9,999, making it seem like you could keep busy with it forever. I could see that depth with its field, skill, and weapon systems that I touched base with in my first hour, however, I still need to moss the things such as the stacking and throwing and more strategic parts of its tactical battles involving using the field to your advantage that seem interesting, but I probably need to watch the tutorial for again to get the hang of properly. I'm sure the mechanics are something I could get used to if I tried though, I just need to spend more time with it. But I'm glad I could get this chance to try it at least a little, and with this most likely being Disgaea's 4's final form, I hope to play more with it soon. If you saw my most recent first impressions video, you know I finally got a chance to play Conception Plus Maidens of the Twelve Stars. This was one I'd had sitting on my PS4 for a good while since its Japanese demo came out almost a year ago, and with the English release coming up and my craving for its music and fun dungeon crawling growing probably thanks to covering its new trailer in my Quick Take series, I finally decided to give the demo a try and wasn't disappointed. If you enjoyed Conception 2 on Vita and are looking for more, you'll probably enjoy Conception Plus, as it's very reminiscent of that second game. It has similar music, enemies, dungeons, but the plus in this case is that it's all on a big screen, and with a more interesting theme this time round, with all the girls corresponding with a zodiac sign that has me feeling more excited this time round, as it's a prettier and better conception game to try. I'm very curious to see how it feels localized as well if I get back to it, but from what I've seen in trailers and just judging from Spike Chunsoft's recent work, I'd say it's likely good. So while I probably probably won't get time with it this month unfortunately. If you're looking for more conception game fun, Plus is the way to go, and I'd love to hear any of your thoughts if you decide to play it. As my JRPG of the month last month, I still look back on the Alliance Alive HD remaster fondly, and while I haven't picked it up since I did my review on it in the start of October, which feels like ages ago, it's another one of my favorites that I played with last month. At the start of October was when I was finishing my time with it, and it was actually causing me a little stress at times since there was a difficulty spike around the second half of the game, and if I hadn't got past it, my review of the game probably would have been quite different. Thankfully though, the spike helped me get to know its unique leveling system where you don't level up from 1 to 2 like usual, but your skills level up along with your HP and magic power going up gradually too, meaning you have to have a good balance of classes to prepare yourself for harder battles and get good at them by awakening skills and using its power up abilities to get the most out of those as well. Once I understood this, I was finally able to benefit from growing my characters properly and reaping the rewards of learning its system, which felt very fulfilling to do. Its interesting systems and story 
story kept me going until the end with its engaging trials, and by the time I finished, I felt like I'd overcome something great in both. Having learned everything now, its post-game options are ones that might make me come back to it someday to dive deeper into its mechanics and try making an even better party with everything I've learned now. That won't be for a while since I'm backed up with games to play, but overall, I definitely enjoyed the experience enough to still want to come back to it, and I hope everyone else who tried it enjoyed it as well. November has two releases I'm pretty interested in, but unfortunately will likely end up missing. Conception Plus should be out by the time this video is up, and Pokemon Sword and Shield will be out on November 15th. However, since I'm still going in Trails of Cold Steel 3 and Atelier Ryza, I don't think I'll get to either of them. I've played so much in October that I'm now backed up on a few experiences, with if you include those two, Final Fantasy VIII Remaster, which I'd still like to finish, and Persona 2 Innocent Sin, which I will finish before the end of the year even if it kills me, it means I'm playing four things at once, which gives me some video game stress that I'd like to remove if I can. So with that in mind, I will finish Trails and Rise of First and then walk towards finishing the other two before the end of the year. I do also want to mention Persona 5 Royal since I didn't end up picking up yet, which I mentioned on Twitter, since as I'm playing Trails and Rise right now, I can't see where I'd fit it in, but it may be a mid-month pickup for this month if it doesn't feel too overwhelming since I really just want to try it, and hopefully I will since I won't be playing it to finish, I'll just be playing it for Japanese study and for fun in between. In any case, the year is quietening down a little, and while I love the hustle and bustle of playing a lot in a month, I am looking forward to having a quiet a month this month, even if it means I'll have to look forward to playing Sword and Shield another time. I'm sure a few of you are looking forward to playing the new Pokemon game, so do let me know your thoughts if you end up playing it, and I also wonder if any of you guys are having the same problem of October and September's big game-filled schedules just completely filling up your game time. As I said last JRPGs I played video, it's always a good problem to have in any case, and I'm sure we're all playing some great JRPGs right now, so let's all do our best to get through everything we can as this year of fun games begins to come to an end. Thank you for watching this video, let me know in the comments below what you played in October and what you plan to play this month. You can like and share this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel for more JRPG content like this, and ring that bell to get notifications on whenever I post so you don't miss a thing. You can check out more videos here and you can find me on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all at JRPG Jungle. And until next time, thank you, bye!